Hello and welcome. In this video, I want to talk about vibrato analysis in Voce Vista Video Pro. So I want to explain what it is, how you can define it in terms of which parameters and how you can measure them in this program. This is a new feature in Voce Vista Video Pro 5.4. So you need at least this version. If you are looking at this in an older version of the program, then this is not going to be there. And if you look at it in a later version, then things might look slightly differently. So to get started, let's look at uh, a recording of an actual human voice. And to do that, click on help, open sample file. And we're going to start with the sample file A03, male vowels. This is a recording of a human singer, a male, and he's singing a sustained note on this pitch, E3. And um, he's changing the vowel, but we will only look at the first one. And it sounds like this. So you can hear that there's a, that he's keeping the pitch, pitch constant, but there's also this quivering quality to the pitch. And I'm um, showing the entire spectrogram here. So these colors indicate which harmonics are there. And the strength of the color indicates the strength of the harmonic. But today we're not really interested in that. And so we can turn off the spectrogram and just look at the pitch. And now I will zoom in the frequency range and also zoom a little bit in, in time. And now you see two lines here, the blue line and the orange line. And the blue line is actually the fundamental pitch of that singer. So you can see that it's not constant at this level, at this frequency of E3, but rather it goes above and below it in a periodic motion. And you can see that this is almost like a sine wave, the, um, the shape of the blue line. And the orange line is the average pitch, averaged over a short window of time. And if this was a completely regular um, oscillation and the pitch was completely constant, then the orange line would be totally flat. But because this is a human and humans are not perfectly constant, it has, it's also wavering a little bit, but it's compared to the blue line, it's pretty straight. So there are a few ways now in which we can characterize the oscillation of the blue line. And before I go uh, more deeply into this example, let's actually look at an actual sine wave and um, see how it is defined in a more theoretical sense. So we can plot a sine wave over time. So we use an x-axis for time and we use a y-axis for the frequency because in this case we are looking at the pitch of the singer and the pitch is measured as a frequency that changes over time. So x-axis time, y-axis frequency and now there is our pitch which in this case um, is displayed as a perfect sine wave. And then we have the orange line which is the mean and for a perfect sine wave the mean is a horizontal line. And now the blue line goes above and below the orange line. So as, in, as a periodic motion, it has a number of peaks and it has a number of places where it crosses the orange line. To characterize the motion, we can measure the time it takes from one peak to the next or from whichever part of the curve um, we can start with until it repeats at the same point. So just taking the peaks, we go from one peak to the next. And now this is an amount of time, actually a period of time. And so therefore we can say this is the period of this oscillation. And if we take the inverse of this, then we get a rate or a frequency. So the period is measured in seconds. For example, the period might be um, half a second. And if, and the rate is the inverse of that. So if it's if the period is half a second, then the rate would be two hertz or two cycles per second. If the period is a fifth of a second, then the rate would be five hertz. So that's the period that uh, shows us how quickly the signal repeats. And the other parameter that we want to look at is how large the oscillation is. 
And for that we can measure the distance between a peak and the center line. And this is what we call the amplitude. So that's simply the distance between a current peak and the center at this point. But if we look at the vibrato literature, then they are not normally indicating the amplitude, which is just the distance between one peak to the center, but rather they go by the extent, which is the distance between two consecutive peaks. Or if you take a longer um, period of time, then it's the average distance between, um, between the peaks. So we have defined a few words now here. One is the period, which is the time it takes until the signal repeats. Then we have the frequency, which is the inverse of the period. So if the period is a fifth of a second, then the frequency would be five cycles per second or five hertz. Then we have the rate, which is the same as the frequency in this context. Then we have the amplitude, which is the distance between a peak and the center or the average. And we have the extent, which is the difference between a positive peak and a negative peak. So now we can go back to the program and look at the readouts of the actual values that we can measure in the recording and see what they are. And to do that, click on View and then Vibrato, vibrato to bring up the Vibrato view. Now here we get two lines. The green line is the Vibrato rate or frequency. And you can see here it is measured in Hertz and this line is kind of hovering around 5 Hertz, slightly higher than that. And we have the vibrato extent, which is the difference from the difference between the positive and the negative peaks. And we can see here that it goes up to maybe almost 100 and then goes down to around 50 and it's somewhere in that range. And of course this is not that easy to read in a very precise way. And so to add a numerical readout, we can bring up the analysis view. And to do that, click on view and then analysis. And this will bring up this window here on the right side. And there I can see the same parameters, rate and extent, but I can see a numerical value in addition to the graph. And now whenever I simply click to position my green cursor line somewhere, then I can see the numerical readout for, this, for these values on the right side. So I've been showing the instantaneous value and I can also show an average value over a selected period of time. And to do that I can simply hold the command key on Mac or the control key on Windows and then click and drag over the time range that I want to look at. So for example here I've selected the time range from half a second to two and a half seconds and I can see the average pitch over that period and the mean vibrato rate and the mean vibrato extent. And I can also change the selection and just drag it around and then I get these values for a different period. So here we can see the vibrato rate of that singer is pretty stable at 5.2 Hertz and the average vibrato extent is about 60 cents. So his amplitude is 30 cents and the peak to peak difference or the peak to peak distance is nearly 60 cents. And you can see here, if he, was, if he had a really strong vibrato and would um, span half a semitone, which is what some singers do, then this blue line would go all the way up to the next semitone line. But you can see it's, it's staying well within this range, so it's not really as strong. Let's look at another singer and see, um, get an idea of somebody who's doing something different. So for example, let's open the file A1. And now here we have a vibrato which is much stronger. For example, looking at this range, he's nearly spanning an entire semitone up and down, but not quite. So let's see what exactly he's doing. So putting the cursor line there, for example, I can see his extent is 150 cents. If he was going up an entire semitone and down, then his extent would be 200 cent, since 100 cent is one semitone. So he's not quite that extreme, but he's already much stronger than the first example we looked at. And the rate is also pretty close to 5.2 Hertz. 
And that's actually what most humans do. They have a vibrato rate around five to six hertz. And that's usually what you will find. If we zoom out here to look at the entire sample, uh, we can apply the standard frequency range to see this whole thing in context and then see the entire recording. Here, the fundamental pitch changes not only with the vibrato, but also with the actual note that the singer is singing. He's not singing a constant pitch, but rather singing a set of intervals. And whenever there's a large change in the pitch, then the vibrato analysis might have a gap because at this point there's no clear value of uh, a curve hovering around the mean. But whenever there's a sustained pitch and we have a clear signal, then the vibrato analysis is going to display something. There's actually a third sample I want to show you and we can look at this here. This is the sample B1. It's a female singer. And I think she's actually singing a little bit faster. So here we can see her rate is around 6 hertz or even slightly higher than that. And her extent is also is actually fluctuating a lot. Here it's pretty large, it starts out very strong and we can zoom in a little bit to amplify that. And then you can see here the extent is very low. The, so the difference between the blue line and the orange line um, or the amplitude, the distance to the mean gets much lower and then it gets stronger again. So you can see how this changes over time. And there's actually something important here that we can change if we go to the vibrato settings. And to do that, bring up the settings, pick analyzer view on the left side. And then here you have a few choices. This is the standard one where you can, for example, highlight the pitch line or enable the pitch line, the mean pitch line, the spectrogram. So you can turn on and off the individual settings that you see here in the main analyzer view. And then when you click on the vibrato tab up here, you get the specific settings for the vibrato view. So you can turn off the whole thing or just turn off the extent if you just want to see the rate. And you can also see the range of the scale that is visible there, which you can also change by pointing at the scale and then using your mouse wheel. If you have a mouse or if you're on a touchpad, just use the two finger gesture. Or if you have neither a mouse nor a usable touchpad, use the one and two keys on your keyboard to zoom in and out wherever you can point at something. So going back to the vibrato settings mm -hmm. here, uh, let's bring back the extent. And now there's the setting here, show individual cycles. And this will enable a vertical line whenever the blue line and the orange line cross. So whenever there's a mean crossing event, we get a uh, vertical line here if we enable this. And this is uh, another way to visually see how regular the vibrato is. And then there are two settings here which are kind of important. One is the mean interval and one is the peak threshold. The mean interval is the amount of time that is used to calculate the mean. And ideally this should be the inverse of the vibrato rate. So for example, looking at the female singer here, her vibrato rate is more like 6 hertz. So the inverse of 6 is 1 over 6 and that's 0 0.16666 or 167 milliseconds. So if we do this then you can see that the mean line gets a lot smoother because now it's more it's closer to uh, always using exactly one period. If it's a little bit more than that then we will get phase differences that um, go into the mean calculation and that makes the line less stable and then that could mean that we have more gaps in our readout. But if you go with the default of 200 milliseconds, which is ideal for 5 hertz, then that works well for most singers. And the other setting here that you see is the peak threshold. And this setting is used to determine if we get a usable cycle or not. If you notice here, sometimes there are gaps in the graph. And that depends a little bit on the zoom level 
but generally if the distance between the blue line and the orange line is large so if there's a very clear peak then the program will register a valid vibrato cycle and if it's not very large or if it's below the threshold for example here you can see that this distance is too small for the program to register a stable um, event at least with these settings so we can go back and maybe make the peak threshold smaller let's set it to five cents and then now the gap is closed because now even this small crossing here is registered as a valid event but if you make it too small and the cycle is very irregular then you will get more false readings and suddenly the, there will be a spike in the green line or in the red line and then you might have to make the peak threshold larger um, unless the data is very clean so i've shown you how to enable the different uh, visual settings by view and uh, vibrato to turn on and off the vibrato view which we can also do here i've shown you how to enable the analysis view to get a numerical reading of the vibrato either for the instantaneous value or if you select a range in time you get the average value averaged over the selected time period and i've shown you how to go to the vibrato settings and adjust the mean interval and the peak threshold and also see the numerical values of the ranges that are displayed for these scales.